75. Parody. It's a thing. Specifically, it's a spoof or comedic satire of something that already exists. Or at least, that's my understanding of what a parody is. My first exposure to parody, you ask? Well, it was the movie Airplane, which is a very funny movie everyone should watch because it's very funny. I'm also aware parody kind of peaked in mainstream in around 2009 with those weird kind of semi-spin-offs of the scary movie franchise, like Date Movie and Superhero Movie. You know, I'm, I'm aware that that's a, that happened. But... Parody kind of got a second life on YouTube, and uh, that's what we're going to talk about. So when talking about parody and YouTube, and parody on YouTube specifically, you gotta keep in mind how, uh, how broad the definition of what a parody actually is, you know, how broad that uh, that becomes. Uh, if you want to be a big old nerd, you be you big old nerd and look up your own definition, don't even bother, I got my own definition, it's written down right in front of me. A parody is a comical imitation of another work. It stops at mocking or making fun of one work. For example, Pride and Prejudice with Zombies is a parody of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. Uh, and, a, and a spoof mocks a genre rather than a specific work. For example, the Scary Movie series is a spoof because it mocks uh, the horror genre rather than one specific film. And now that you know that, get those definitions and huck them out a window. Parody on YouTube doesn't, doesn't follow either of those definitions. Don't even, don't even worry about it. So let's just say that parody on YouTube can be broken down into loose categories of what type of a parody is it type categories. So you'd have songs, you'd have uh, fake trailers, you'd have full on sketches, you'd have dubbing of cartoons, you'd have Minecraft, that is a lie. And I know some people would say, oh, fake trailer, that's just, that's just a type of sketch, isn't it? But I'd argue, what, why would you say that? I'm trying to make a video. If I put a separate category there, it wouldn't be the same thing. Look, Honest Trailers and Jax Films have both made fake trailers for the movie Twilight. And while the content is mostly the same, the format is very different. I'd make the distinction of a fake trailer repurposes the original media, whereas in a sketch, someone is recreating, you know, filming their own version of that original media. That was a great segue into talking about sketches. Sketch comedy has always been around, sketch comedy will always be around, but sketch comedy has a beautiful relationship to parody. It's it's really nice. Outside of some, you know, tragic real life human events, everything can be parodied in the sketch format. You, you have movies, uh, TV shows, video games, YouTube content, anything, everything. Other examples that you can think of, the dubbing of cartoons. That's a whole kettle of fish that I can't even begin to get into. It, it's so it's so complex. It's it's so difficult to make good dubs. You know, retooling animation to make a completely new product takes a lot of effort. But I guess if I have to boil down the definition into something, you take some animation, you write a new script, you put in new voices, and you re-edit the whole thing to essentially have a cartoon make fun of itself. Song, songs, <laughs> song parodies. Chances are, when I say parody on YouTube, you think of song parodies, okay? Re remember the time when after any pop song was released, within the space of a week, there'd be 10 to 20,000 joke versions of that song uploaded to YouTube and then fucking spread like wildfire throughout the internet being reposted to even meme accounts. Re remember when that was a whole thing and then it stopped? Song parodies may very well have been the pinnacle of success for a parody on YouTube, but before we talk about the pinnacle of parody, we gotta, we gotta reel it back, you know, we gotta go back to the beginning. You have to have the background knowledge to understand what, what all of this means, so let us let us go back, you and I, to the beginning, to the dawn. In the beginning, there was nothing. And then a man went to the zoo. <laughs> okay, oh, alright, that, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a little, that's a little, that's a little bit goofy. So, uh, yeah, you know, from humble beginnings, YouTube starts to rise, you know, becoming a something, becoming one of the most visited websites on all the internet, selling you on the idea that you too 
you too could broadcast yourself. Anybody and everybody could upload to YouTube. So that's what everybody did, baby. That's how you get your likes. Your likes of your Ryan Higas, of your I Justines, of your Venetian Princesses, your Wasabi Productions, your Jenna Marbles, your Dave Days, your Shane Dawson's. Well, all of them made parody in some form or another. There's a slow rise from 2005 to 2010, not just for the platform, but for the community it created. You know, and parody, parody was always there, kind of lurking about the place, seeing, you know, tipping its head over, seeing what's going on. Most of the parody songs from this era uh, don't really uh, do much like uh, criticisms of the works they're making fun of, but more so uh, take the backing track of the song, make the lyrics about a different thing, and then slap the word parody onto it. No, 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 your honor, it's not thievery. Because I put the word parody in the title of the video. Am I just rewriting a popular song for views? <laughs> No. The 2010s arrive and with it comes its own new prominent YouTube figures, people who want to stand apart from the lol random XD generation. And while YouTube has always had traces of edgy comedy and edgy content, you know, just a little bit of oopsie doopsie racism, you know, just a little don't look, you won't see it type thing. Um, but things change. Um, I don't uh, Mean-spirited isn't quite the right word for it. It's more like um, taboo words and topics being used for cheap comedy with no real discussion uh, for why they're taboo and no consideration for the repercussions of normalizing stuff like blackface and yellowface, any other ethnicity face, you know, use of derogatory language that uh, hurts minorities and alienates others. That, uh, that classic good comedy, that good shit. Where, where did all this edgy con- where, where did all this dark comedy come from? Where did that happen? Where did all the dark humor come from? Well, um, varieties like the spice of life just start off a couple of boys trying to be a little bit goofy, you know, stand out a little bit from the crowd. And then everyone wanted to stand out from the crowd, so everyone became the crowd standing out from the crowd. You, you get me. Edgy content took a hold over YouTube well into like 2016, and then it, you know, I don't know, it just died out for some reason. I don't even know why. But apparently, a lot of people got their sense of humor from here and never really let go of it or questioned it or analyzed why it was funny in the first place and just kind of took it at face value. And there's nothing better, there's nothing better than a bunch of lads who don't understand that them being a prick is somehow different than a fictional character in a dark comedy. I don't know how to tell you this, okay? We can tell the difference between fictional character Filthy Frank and real person George Miller, right? And when we laugh at the crazy antics of the fictional character of Filthy Frank, we're not laughing with them. We're, we're laughing at them, <laughs> okay? <laughs> In more traditional media, the line between character and real person is more clearly defined. You know, it's easier to tell it apart. But with YouTube personalities, because you only see so many of them when they're in character, it's difficult. It, the line gets blurrier between what's real them and what's stage them. Um, that said, if you see someone acting like a cunt, you shouldn't really want to act like them. Anyways, deviated a little bit too much there from the central topic, you know, bringing it back, uh, bringing it back on track. What started off as people experimenting with different types of comedy and trying to like push the line further on YouTube, uh, that rapidly deteriorated, amazingly quickly into, oh, he say fucked up thing, he get money? Hmm. I say fucked up thing. I get money also? And so began the race to uh, say the most fucked up thing and see how far you could just kind of push that line. So it's the summer of 2014 and parody songs have taken over the nation, leading the charge as Bart Baker bravely writing really mean songs for no reason. And don't get me wrong, at the time, barely pubescent boy me was like, ah, I can get behind these poop and vagina jokes, that's, that's fucking hilarious. My favorite part of them is when they try to claim the moral high ground over, you know, the bad pop stars. Because I really love drugs. Miley's so cool. Let's do drugs too! 
You see kids, in the wild wild west that was YouTube pre-2016, you could pretty much do anything. Yeah, there was a line and you could cross it, but don't think of it really as a line. Think of it more as like a big elastic wall that you can like kind of run into and just bend at your will with seemingly no end to its elasticity. Also the wall is covered in thick fog so no one can see what's going on at all. And no one particularly wants to know what's going on, because then they might see the wall snap. We don't want to see that. Look, this was a pre-apocalypse world, okay? People were still essentially making money off Google AdSense, alright? Sponsors were around, but they didn't really matter that much, because people had that sweet, sweet ad money. Google was paying everyone's builds. That matched with uh, better technology becoming more available to more people and a lot of slimy third parties coming in and offering their services meant that certain uh, qualities of the parties, you know, they improved. Uh, instrumentation, production value, you know, that kind of got better. Um, quality stayed roughly the same. The quality of the jokes of the parody itself. Is that mean? I mean it is, yeah. Look, obviously not every YouTube parody was this weird, obnoxious shit, but I'd say the vast majority of established and rising stars on YouTube definitely leaned into this brand of comedy to some degree or another. There was a period where everyone kind of did this, ooh, it would be a little bit edgy type thing. I have watched an unsightly amount of YouTube parody videos to be prepared for this video. You know, your research, your investigational journalism, things you have to do in order to make a YouTube video. You, obviously. One of the things I've noticed about most YouTube parody channels is that there comes a point in their career where um, they try to emulate the thing they're parodying in not the wrong ways, but their focus is on the locations, the sets, the props, the camera moves, the uh, makeup and costumes. They try to emulate visually the thing they're parodying like to the maximum extent, to uh, what their budget will allow them to make the version of the thing they're parodying. That's a real human sentence that I just said. So in a strange way, the homemade, dirt cheap budget early stuff that Jax Films and Ryan Higa made are still funny, they're still charming, that stuff still works. But the later stuff, the, the pseudo TV sketch show era, I don't want to be rude, but it's Dog shit. Like, decent production value, it looks nice, but the importance is put on the presentation, not on the comedy, and that really, really shows. Even just watching a few of them for this video, there's like so much of just a easy. Just a collection of shocky things and like, whoa, I can't believe you said that type stuff, and not much else. And I know. Five years ago was a different time. PC's gone mad. We don't even, we can't even do jokes anymore. But it's just not that. It's just no good. It's just mean. It's just so mean for no reason. I do think in part some of the dependence on shock humor and edgy jokes for the sake of being edgy on like a lot of these parodies comes down to the speed at which they were produced. Trying to upload your version of a thing as soon after as the original is put out there in order to drive views to your channel leaves you with a very small window in which to write jokes and come up with criticisms and make a thing that's good. So yeah, is that what killed parody, huh? Just, just a bunch of bad parodies? No, 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 no. To use one of the most overused examples in the history of examples, much like the Weimar Republic in the 1920s, printing more and more paper marks, overflowing the market, killed the market. And so what eventually killed parody on YouTube was too much parody. Too much of it, is, we, we were tired of it. There's all this parody and people were like, we don't want it anymore, get it out of here. There's a word for that. I learned it in school. It's something like uh, hyperinflation. That's what it is, that's the word. Yeah. I sounded sound really, really clever, clever there. there. Don't, don't, uh, don't, don't fuck, fuck it up, it up now. now. As you can obviously imagine from everything I've said now, you must believe, ah. Oh, Parody's dead. Yeah, parody's fucking dead. That's a lie. I've lied twice now in this video. How will you ever believe me? Parody's alive. That that era of YouTube though, that's uh that's on its last fucking legs. Actually, that's uh that's a better title. Here is a multitude of reasons uh, explaining my point. 
um, which I will convey just about as well as everything else I've done so far. <clears throat> Why this brand is sinking and dying and we shouldn't try, we don't need to save it, let it rot. By David. A age 21. <laughs> Changes to the platform. Um, YouTube's not trying to sell edgy, gross out humor anymore. It's not what it wants to be associated with its brand. So if that's the main meat of your videos, obviously then it's not gonna go very well. Also, they don't really care about uh, overall views, but how long you can retain a viewer. What that means is it doesn't mean your individual clicks, but how long you can keep people watching. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a thing. That's also why clickbait changed on YouTube. You can't just throw some boobs in a thumbnail, get people to watch for 30 seconds and then click off. No, you gotta keep people entertained. It used to be short as hell, two to five minutes, then it went up to 10 minutes for mid-roll ads, and the next thing you know, you see people making 20 to 30 minute long videos about hardly anything. <clears throat> Moving on. External Forces, UGM, copyright infringement, other example. Imagine trying to recreate someone else's song down to a T, get it precisely right, when there's an automated system in place scanning the internet for any tracks that remotely resemble what's in its database. It's a nightmare. You're just feeding the beast. And no, you can't just say, oh, don't worry, it's a parody, because you're talking to a machine. Beep boop. Fuck you! That's what the machine says. <laughs> also, hey, maybe you'll have better luck if you're pirating a TV show or a movie. Sure, just don't use any of their footage. Oh, and also, if the creator of the thing finds your thing and doesn't like it, they can still hit you at a copyright infringement claim, and uh, no one's really going to do anything about it. Who cares about you? YouTube lost a ton of advertisers. A lot of the third party companies that used to help influencers with their shit kind of dried up and disappeared. No money, they can't keep going. So you've got no system in place to help you fight claims like this. What are you going to do on your own? Huh? Go up to the big corporate entity and be like, excuse me, but you hit my, my account with a copyright claim that I don't think is fair. They don't care about you. They don't care, you little bitch boy. What are they going to do? Going to apologize to you? <laughs> the audience. A lot of these videos don't have uh, what we'd call a long term uh, lifespan. These accounts would parody anything and everything if it drove people to their channels. But if your focus is on, hey, look, popular thing, but joke, instead of on like, you know, rewatchability, a few months down the line, how many people are coming back to look at your catalog of pitbull parody songs? Also, the pseudo TV sketch show format that a lot of these videos were filmed in has all but disappeared on YouTube, probably because it's too expensive. Also, because of phones and because of Vine. Vine changed a lot about how sketches were filmed on the internet. No longer did you need thousands of dollars and a large crew to make sketches work. You just needed your phone and maybe a tea towel on your head to indicate that you were a second character. And now it's gone. Its legacy has been passed down to Twitter video and TikTok and I guess, I guess, in, no, not Instagram. And hey, maybe that's a super fascinating video. You know, I, I'd watch that. I'd write that. I guess I should go write that. Anyways, where... Parody on YouTube has evolved. It's changed. It's no longer the huge Goliath of entertainment it once was, but it's still there. It really is an interesting time to be looking back on this era of YouTube though. A lot of the personalities that had their big rise from this time have either shifted focus to something completely different or uh, slowly disappeared from the platform. Some of them being uh, kicked out. It is though, it is really interesting to look back on this era of YouTube because so little of it remains. That brand of comedy with its crudeness is almost entirely gone. The bland way of filmmaking, also gone. The only remnants of it that are really left exist only in corporately owned and produced YouTube content. Stuff like Shot Studios, you know, you see that there. Lily Pons and all of those are still around and with the next rise of TikTok stars coming over to YouTube, I don't think corporately owned and produced YouTube content will ever fully disappear, but it just follows trends, killing them in its wake. Providing easy cannon fodder for commentary YouTubers. Ecosystems, you know, they, they change, they evolve, they adapt. 
Anyways, this uh, this has been a YouTube video.